I mean. Um, so next up, we have speaking is uh, Sister Jamika Bruce, and uh, this is uh, for myself. This is a very, very important part of the program because this is our only sister who's speaking. So two things. One, I want to thank her because it takes a lot of courage to do this, to get up here when I mean, this is not what you do. And but more importantly, uh, she's a member of my family. She's my cousin. And growing up, there were times where Dean missed <coughs> all of us at some points, or we or we missed Dean, right? And in my family right now, the young people are lost, I'm telling you. And it's not just my family, are lost. And so a lot of those problems that we've seen growing up as kids, the ones that we said we would never repeat, they're being repeated and they're being magnified. So I thank her for doing this and I thank her for being the kind of mother that she is because she diligently brings her kids to the Sunday school. Diligently. Diligently. We got like 12 kids that always come. This thing should be packed. It should be 100 kids. We got 12 kids that always come. And her kids are two of them. And they learn it. And last but not least, I thank her for helping me inside of my family to uphold the banner of Muhammad. It's important. Because before anybody takes dowel from anybody else, they're going to take it from their family. You're going to take it from big cuz, a big sis, a big bro, a little bro, for that matter, right? So I think as my older cousin, I think of her being a Muslim. So without further ado, inshallah, Jimmy Bruce. Peace be upon Um, if it asked me to do this about a month ago, and I said yes, my husband told him I wasn't going to because I don't like to speak in front of people. I wrote this whole thing I was going to talk about temptations. I wrote it yesterday. I went to my dad's house, <laughs> and I read it to him and my stepmom, and they're like, oh, I think you should speak about, you know, you growing up, your mother being Christian, your father being Muslim. It's more so, you know, you, you know, speak about that. So then I was like, I'm not going to do it. I texted Evan like an hour before this. <laughs> I said, I'm not doing it, Evan. I'm sorry. I hope you can forgive me. I can't do it. I don't want to speak in front of people. I texted my stepmom. I told her I was stressed out. <laughs> I told her I wasn't going to come. She was like, no, come, come. So I came a little late. <laughs> but my child, I made it. So unlike a lot of other people who got up here, I wasn't raised into Islam. I wasn't always Muslim. So as far as I can remember, my dad always been Muslim. And, um, but my mother was Christian. I was raised in church. I took my shahada when I was younger because the people around me was Muslim. Like some people I knew that was Muslim, I took my shahada, but not knowing the contract that I was signing, not knowing the importance of Islam. So I would wear my hijab, but I wouldn't pray because I really didn't know. I didn't have any guidance. I didn't have, me and my mom is very close. And she really wasn't happy about it. So it was kind of like, I really didn't have nobody to go to at the time. I would still wear the tight jeans. I would still go out sometimes, put it on hair, take it off there. And then when times got hard, I went back to Christianity because that was all I knew. I went back, I started going to church, but even being in the church, I wasn't growing. So I kind of like questioned it. I knew my heart really wanted to be in Islam, and as I got older, I started to have children, and I knew that it was, it was the right way, and I knew that I had to teach my kids. Nobody else was going to teach them but me. So, I kind of went back to Christianity because I was close to my mom. My mom really didn't want me to be Muslim. She kept telling me that wasn't the way to be. We was raised in the church. Oh, my mom's turning in her grave right now. That was everything, so I wanted to please my mom at the time. So about a little over two years ago, I remember my aunt took her shahada, a cousin took her shahada, and my mom kind of looked at it like it was a fad. And she was, oh, I was talking about it here and there. Like, I think I'm gonna take my shahada again. And she was asking me questions, so I like, well, why? Is it because this person or that person? I started to read on my own. And I kind of feel like the young girls out here that's taking their shahada, 
Alhamdulillah, they're taking that shahada, you know, they want to be Muslim. But I feel that people who are giving them that shahada need to tell them what they're getting themselves into. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I sound a little shaky because I'm nervous. But I feel like the more they read for their self, they will want to worship Allah. The more they study for their self, they would know. Like, they would be running, like, yeah. wanting to learn more because it's that serious. So a little over two years ago, I took my shahada again. And alhamdulillah, I'm here, and this is where I want to be. And inshallah, this is where I stay. But I had children, I had four children. And it's hard because my oldest, um, my first child, she's not by my husband. Her father's Christian. So me trying to teach her, she was like six. So it was kind of like, okay, mom, we used to go to church all the time. But now you want me to go to the match. So it was kind of hard. I tried to explain it to her, but I had to help from my stepmother, Malika, my father, Jabel. I had to help with people around me. And all I could do was make dua. That's all I could do was pray. My other kids, like my son, it's easy. Like, you know, this is, he was young, so this is really all he knew. My other son, my daughter, one of my daughters, she covers because she see her mom cover. My daughter that's eight is kind of like, okay, but my dad said you're not supposed to be Muslim, so I don't know. It was like, you know, she kind of go back and forth. All I could do is pray and teach her. She's with, with me majority of the time. All I can do is teach her the way, the right way. But what I'm really trying to say is, you can't, do you can't you can't do what someone else wants you to do. Like I explained to my mom the best way I knew how. Mom, when you die in the day of judgment, you have to answer for your sins and what you believe in. When I die, I have to answer for me. And I have to teach my kids what I know, what I know is right. Because right now I'm responsible for them. So it's probably a lot more that I need to say that I probably think about when I sit down. But I'm gonna leave right now. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening to me. <laughs> I sound like a <laughs>